Hello and welcome to Juicy Scoop. I have a return guest, Kristen Dote. Am I saying it right? Dote. 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 You were my first Vanderpump person that I ever had. And I was just telling you, because when the show first started, I was like, oh, another show. I don't know that I'll get into it. It's, it's you know, it's not Housewives. Let me see. And then when I started doing this show um, over four and a half years ago, people started to talk so much about it. And I was like, oh, who should I get? Okay, I'll get this girl, Kristen. And you, everyone was dying. That was like a really good interview because- It was very juicy. (laughs) It was very juicy because at that time on Vanderpump Rules, you had just ended or we were seeing on the show that you um, were having problems with your current boyfriend who was DJ James Kennedy. Oh God. (laughs) At that time. And so you revealed a lot about that Mm -hmm. situation. Uh But we're going to talk all about Vanderpump Rules, but you have a book out and everybody needs to pre-order it because you guys know I have schooled you on that you need to pre-order people's books because that's how you get on the list. It is how you're going to buy it, which you are. You pre-order it. It's at your house or it's on your Kindle or wherever you iPad the day that it comes out. And it doesn't come out for a few months, right? Mm -hmm. What's the day? June 2nd. June 2nd. But let the girl get the pre-orders. I have it. Here it is. This is like the the not official, uncorrected proof, though I found no mistakes, and um, and it is really fun. Thank you. Now I'm it is very a, proud. <laughs> it is a dating book. Mm-hmm. It's called "He's Making You Crazy: How to Get the Guy, Get Even, and Get Over It." And um, you've dated a lot of people. I have <laughs> <laughs> a lot. I've lived like eighteen lifetimes of boyfriends and in. Suitors, I guess. I mean, I didn't really realize, mm-hmm. but then there, there's these really fun, and it's very funny, and like, like little chapters about you know when you worked on this job, you met this guy and this guy, and um, it is pretty. It's really fun. So I kind of skipped around because I didn't have time to read the whole thing, but I still wanted to like ask you questions. So and I like it because I think I don't know if people understand like it's it's pre Vanderpump. It's everything you've seen on Vanderpump. So you're going to get my yes. side of that, but it's also post season eight, which no one has which seen. Which is at what all. they're watching right now. We're yeah. in season eight, okay. and actually even post filming season eight. So what has happened in my life? Like over in the fall, once we were wrapped filming. So, yes, you'll get to if you read the book, you're going to know things that no one has seen or knows about or I've ever talked about. Oh, thus okay. Far, which is cool. Yeah, that is because I didn't really get to the end. Yeah. I did read the chapter um, where you touch upon the fact that you slept with your boyfriend's best friend. Mm-hmm. And, you know, but you don't say who it is, but mm-hmm. we know from the show, because we all saw it on the show, that you and Jack's. Had an indiscretion. Right. Had a night of drinking. Yeah, this is not a different person. We'll just throw it out there. I'm pretty sure everyone gets this no, part as Jack's. It's Jack's. It's I Jack's. didn't do this twice. But you don't say no, but you don't say the name, but right. you make it clear that it was, you know, the situation and the time of your life. And um, and so everybody saw that on the show. Mm-hmm. And some of the one of the questions that people asked about that, and you explain it and you explain it very humbly and, you know, don't try to sugarcoat it and that you're, you know, one of your greater regrets in life and mm-hmm. everything. And one of the questions um, one of the juice scoopers asked is, it it was who revealed it? It was Jax who revealed it, wasn't it? Um, or at the very beginning of like how it even came out. Like it, how if it had it like, was Katie, Katie, mm-hmm. and how did Katie know? Um, a mutual friend of ours who's not in the picture anymore, who was never on the show, I guess. So, Supposedly, Jax told her one oh, night, okay. and so then, and then she told Katie, she told and then Katie, Katie, and then okay. one night when Katie was drunk, which I guess you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. It's a blessing in disguise. Thank God it just came out. We got it over with, right? Um, and it just kind of like loose lips, and it slipped out from and Katie's had, mouth. Had this person never um, that like kept their mouth shut, mm-hmm. or Jax had never shared it with that girl, um, and it never come out. Do you think you would have taken it to the grave? I think so. I mean, it pro- I, looking back now, I mean, I'm a very different person than I'm now. Much more, I'm grown up a lot, a lot more mature. It probably would have eaten away at me at some point, but at the time, my intent was to absolutely just take it to the grave. Right. And and if it hadn't come out at that time and maybe a couple of years had passed, mm-hmm. why wouldn't you keep it till the grave? Yeah. Because a couple of years passed, everybody's, you know, wounds have been now healed. Everyone's in other relationships. It's like, why would you? I, I, I'm all for 
keep taking to the grave. Yeah. I have friends and people that have had whatever indiscretion and you always hear about it. I just have to tell them. I have to tell them that I cheated that night. Mm -hmm. And it's, I just have to get off my chest. Well, maybe that'll make you feel better. But then what are you really doing to the person? Why do they need to know that something weird happened and in Miami or what, you know, like, or whatever, what, if, if it's not going to have a lasting effect, except clearing your conscience. Right. You I know. just think, just <clears throat> don't, just don't fuck up. Just don't yeah. do it. And <laughs> just right, learn exactly. from those mistakes and just don't. I mean, it was a lesson learned for sure. And yeah. I'm somehow like, grateful that it came out, maybe not the way that it did, but I think that it was just such a monumental moment that really ruined a lot of relationships and friendships, luckily temporarily. But, you know, I think had it not, we would have all been living in this land of thinking everything was much better than it was. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. So now, so now we're in season eight. There's so many questions mm-hmm. here. Oh, one question I have is I was in watching the the big party that they had at the beginning of the season mm. with Katie and at Katie and Tom's house, and it's in the afternoon, and it was a chill party or what do they call it? House chilling. House chilling, which is cute. But one thing I noticed was just like this intense amount of drinking yeah. that takes place <laughs> right. It's like two in the afternoon, yeah. and I just kind of wonder, like at this point, is as you guys get a little older, is no one being like, hey, doesn't really agree with me anymore, or I'd like to, like, scale it back? Or has it become such a routine with the cameras, with the group of people, that everybody just knows, like, it's a party, we're going to get pretty drunk, we're going to all definitely drink a lot, I mean, besides, like, Lala. I think at that party, especially, because we had, like, the new people there, Uh it was like, very much like and probably an icebreaker for them and even for us and just I mean like what looking back on that episode and remembering like how I felt at that time especially because I was going through so much with Carter so I was like I'm just gonna drown in my sorrow and my tequila you know what I mean um but typically I think what we all love now about like living in the valley and kind of having a much more chill paced life it's not really like that but Again, we're this is like an actual party with a lot of people, people that we don't know. I think everyone was like on, a little bit on edge. Yeah. So it was like, okay, let's act like a bunch of twenty five year olds. And let's go to the cast photo <laughs> real quick. There's so many. I know. I mean, how do you feel about the new cast? We kind of see on Twitter that it doesn't seem like everybody. There's some people really that loves... I think I think they're great additions, and I and they're have become really good friends of mine. And then other people I think can kick rocks and don't really bring anything to the show. Well, let's just go through the table. Mm-hmm. I'm going to really literally count how many people are in this photo. Okay? <laughs> this guy on the edge. That's Brett Cap. Brett? Brett, yes. And he's the new bartender at Sir. Mm-hmm. And next... I think he's a server right now. And then like, you're, she's a server. Okay, yeah. then, and you're right next to him. How do you mm-hmm. feel about him? I like Brett. Brett's cool. We're not super close, but I think he's cool. Like we, we hang casually and socially the only people that i'm really close to out of the new people are dana and max and max okay. isn't really new max is new to to the viewers but max has been the gm at tom tom since it opened or like right after they opened he was like the second well GM. i went to the vanderpump ball mm-hmm. not this past november but the november yeah. november before and we have this aura frame that has these photos going through it like a digital thing mm-hmm. and the other day i'm like oh my god and it was sheena and him yeah <laughs> they went together and I remember I'm like, what's this guy's story? And she's like, oh, and she was like kind of aloof about it. Yeah. He's my best friend. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if she's his best friend. She made it seem like they were dating because they were. They were. Yeah. They were. But I was like, oh, that's so weird now to see him on the show. Mm-hmm. And OK, then we've got your other ex-boyfriend, DJ James Kennedy. Yeah, that was really fun to have to stand next to him for hours on end. So is it still weird between you guys? Yeah. Still I'm, not good. I'm, it, I, it's never going to be. Yeah. Not for me. I just, I have no interest. I stay as far away from him as possible. If we have to be in settings like this photo shoot or like work-related things, I'm just as professional as I can be because I have a job to do. But otherwise, no. And when, in watching his exchange with his now current girlfriend, Mm -hmm. Raquel, how do you feel about Raquel? I mean, I'm terrified for her. If he's acting the way, what I've been watching on Vanderpump Rules Mm -hmm. and the way that he talks to her, like it's full PTSD for me and if he's doing that to her on camera I can't imagine what it's like behind closed doors I feel bad for her it feels um, 
Yeah, I mean, if this is the way the relationship is on year one, yeah, I would say. Well, and this I don't is think not, they're in love. I think they not, use each other for to be notoriety and for the show and to put on this front. Um, I've always felt that way. I still feel that way, but I do feel bad for her because I feel like she is. They do live together. I mean, in real life, they live together. They have a they dog together. together. Right. They live together. They have a dog together. Show for is, a few years. The show is dependent on it, so your career is dependent mm-hmm. on it. And also, they're just young. Yeah, so a lot of people young. are not in the healthiest, best relationships when you're young. Right. Um, so, you know, you sometimes don't have anything else to compare mm-hmm. it to. But I, I'm curious if her watching back or if even he watching back realizes like, oh, this is... You know, I'm putting a lot of pressure on her. You mm-hmm. know, like yeah, no, he would never. He's too selfish for that. <laughs> now, wait, how did you guys? You guys, because he was the bus boy or whatever. Yeah, I would, really, it was a rebound, not a relationship. I was right. looking for anything to anyone real- to make me feel good about myself when I felt terrible about myself because Tom didn't want me anymore, and it was like, and you and Tom had been together really. That was like almost the, six years. So that's like the most longest. Yeah, that was the longest relationship in your life. Yes. And you guys met working together, or you, or no? You were Jax, uh, Jax introduced us at his Christmas party back okay. in two thousand eight, two thousand seven. And, and then you were you both currently working on the show when the show was cast? Um, at, Are you working ten- at the restaurant? Sorry, when yes, the show was he cast. was working at Villa Blanca, the one okay. in Beverly Hills. Right. He and, and Ariana and Sheena, and, and the were, rest of us were at Sir. But you guys were a couple. Yes. And that was one of the appeals of casting the show is that yeah. there were such deep relationships, romantic and right. platonic. It was and like friendship. Katie Stassi and I being best friends, dating Tom Tom and Jax, who are best friends. Yes. And I was living with Tom Tom and Jax for a period of time, like all three boys and me. And oh, okay. then you have like Tom's really good friends with Sheena, who works at Villa Blanca, and then Sheena and Eddie Cibrian. And it was just right. like, what is happening? And that's essentially how we got Vanderpump Rules. That's where the magic began. <laughs> yeah. Okay. The next to DJ James Kennedy, we also have. Lala, mm-hmm. and they had their one night fling That's too. So weird to think about now. I know, <laughs> so weird. But she's like, you know what? I feel sorry for the kid. And she's doing some music with him again. Mm-hmm. I love that she calls him a kid. <laughs> I know. Um, okay, then we've got your ex boyfriend below, mm-hmm. Tom Sandoval, and he has been with Ariana now for six years. Oh. So all, as long as you guys. Yeah. And one of the questions was last season we saw that you guys had like some a moment of where you kind of talked about how, oh, isn't it interesting that we're friends and we really enjoy each other? And some of the viewers were like, well, how did that happen? Because yeah. there was obviously a lot of tension and there was a lot of speculation of like, was there cheating involved with Ariana or were you guys really done when their friendship became more. There's a whole chapter all about Tom and Ariana and exactly what everyone didn't get to see. Because I feel like that's something that Ariana and I got really frustrated about when it came to filming the show. And it's not that we like got to film things and they didn't air it. They just really, for whatever reason, didn't find it important to show how we went from A to B. Mm-hmm. But the viewers were constantly asking both of us, like, wait, now you guys are friends? How did that happen? How did it happen? You know? Yeah. And it took time. It definitely took time. And I think I think the biggest thing was once Ariana realized I was no longer trying to sabotage their relationship or sabotage her own personal life and I was no longer acting out. And then I was finally like when I started dating Carter, I think that had a lot to do with it too. Like they really liked him. They saw me in a much happier space. So they no yeah. longer felt like they had to like run and hide and get a restraining order for you know with me. And do you think <laughs> that their their hiding like that feeling was valid? Yeah, probably. <laughs> I mean, I let's be honest. When I brought Miami girl into Sir, my intent was strictly to break them up. Now that what was the story there? That was another question. Mm-hmm. What was explain to everybody what that was that we saw and what was happening. There was some girl that reached out to you. No, is there was and again I right, this is all in the book in very in a lot of detail. Okay. But the it overall the, yeah. yeah, it was there was this story that this chick basically sold to a tabloid saying that she had hooked up with Tom while Tom was dating Ariana and that she uh-huh. and her friend partied with Tom and Jax in Miami. So the second I saw it, I was like, oh my God, I found her on Instagram. She was already following me. So I followed back because she was private. I sent her one little message that said, is the story true? That's all I wrote. And she just loose lips, just sang, sang like a bird. Okay. And told me 
you know, who knows if if some of the I mean, there was there was a lot of truth to what she was telling me. Yeah. But also, it doesn't mean they slept together. Right. It means they spent time together. Mm-hmm. So now, I mean, I don't care anymore. But really, what I was holding on to in that moment is that she was this girl from Miami or whatever was telling me that Tom still had feelings for me. That is all I needed. Whether it was true or not, I'm like, oh my god! So he's still in love with me. So he doesn't even like Ariana, and we're gonna get back together, and everything's gonna be she great. She said when they spent time together, he expressed he was ta- that. Yeah, that he was talking oh, about it. me, even though they slept together. It was all very weird. Or but, they did. We don't know. Yeah, allegedly. who knows? Okay, but yeah. at the, but at the time, that is like that's what I held on to. It was like a little carrot just dangling, and I was oh, like, right. perfect. Right, and she probably loved. Giving you that information, yeah. being that person with that information, and she flew then herself bonding out. with she you. She wanted to film the show. She wanted to of confront course. him. I'm she sure wanted to she confront was Ariana. A, a super fan. Mm-hmm. So she flies herself out. Mm-hmm. And now do you- Yeah, contrary to popular belief, everyone kept saying, like, I flew her out. Like, at that time, I could barely pay rent. So trust <laughs> me, I'm not flying myself anywhere, let alone flying this stranger in to, like, crush Tom and Ariana's relationship. So she flies out. Mm-hmm. And then you, like, say, hey, come to the- restaurant or what where was the did it happen yeah so i actually had to meet up with her prior to and we um went to Cantor's on fairfax yeah in in west hollywood and we were supposed to have lunch so we could like sort of talk on about every, all, this is all on camera uh-huh. um it aired and not the whole thing but it was basically the converse private conversation she and i were having the producers were like well if you've already said this we need to see that this is what's for the story said. yeah right just to kind of show clarify it. exactly yeah. and um, I, I wasn't happy about it because the last thing I want to do is sit across from a little diner table from a girl that s- allegedly slept with my ex-boyfriend who I'm like desperately trying to still be with. But we had the conversation. I told her I was going to serve for Rachel O'Brien's birthday. Rachel and I went to have drinks. And I knew that Tom was on the schedule because I still worked at Sir until that day. <laughs> and, and then what happened? And then, she, yeah, she came in. She confronted him. He fled. Ariana took off. They just said, we're not dealing with this. And then we have the infamous telling me telling my manager to suck a dick because she was like, you can't yell and scream in here. You can't be upset in here. And I'm like, I'm a patron. Blah, you know, and then I got fired. So and so you, and you've never worked. Karma. Since. No, never worked. it. So and how since. are you with Lisa now? Lisa and I have had like a we took a real turn this past year. And I don't know if it's because she's seeing growth in me. I mean, I know she's very, she always like commends me and is very proud of the book which means a lot and my other business endeavors um I feel like whether it was housewives or with the passing of her mother the passing of her brother I just think her demeanor changed a Mm -hmm. lot especially with me so she's been a lot kinder we're not bffs like she's not asking me for to go over for high tea at you know Villa Rosa but yeah but she's much kinder and that's that's great yeah and when you get fired from sir and you're on this reality show about being a waiter mm-hmm. at these places. Does that put your reality show career in jeopardy? I mean, I'm still on it, so no. <laughs> you're still on it, but were you at ever concerned like that? Or were you yeah, relieved? I'm, because I'm, it seems like most of them now don't work there, which I get. And then I always feel kind yeah. of bad, like, why does Sheena still have to work there? When nobody really is working yeah. there but the, the two Toms. Yeah. So, I, I like, it's interesting, like, who gets a pass and who doesn't and who still gets to be, like, featured a lot, even though yeah, you're not asking who wants the goat, the goat I cheese mean, balls. I mean, they, yeah, they did, they did me a favor. Yeah. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm stoked. I didn't yeah. have to work there anymore, and I got to focus on the things that were really important to me. Right. Okay, so, okay, going down the list mm-hmm. here. Okay, so then we have... Um, up here we have Stassi mm-hmm. and her new fiance Bo. Yeah. Bo. And now, what is going on? Now we we know that you and Katie and Kristen Stassi. St- yeah. I'm sorry that yeah. you Stassi and Katie were the threesome. Yeah. And you have the witches of West Ho <laughs> wine, which is a WeHo. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> WeHo. <laughs> West wine. Ho's good too. <laughs> wine, and then. That you guys had issues at the end of last season, the mm-hmm. beginning of this season. From a viewer's point, it's that you have confided in them and on camera that you and Carter were having a lot of issues. Yeah. And then they give you advice and you continue to give them second chances or stay in the situation. And they as girlfriends and everybody's been in this situation. 
mm-hmm. whether you're the one receiving the boohoo asshole news or mm-hmm. you're the one that gives it. And we all do it. <laughs> we all do it. And it's what is hard is that it's like if you do decide to confide in someone other than a therapist um, that is, you know, signs a thing never to share. Mm-hmm. Then you are opening up yourself to then criticism if, in fact, you stay in the situation. Oh, yeah. And to the person that's hearing it all the time. They're going to think he's a complete dirtbag. And they're also going to think, like, <laughs> well, why did I waste all this time giving this advice when you right. didn't give the advice? Right. And so is that kind of where the the cracks started to happen in the relationship? That's what it feels like. I mean, I've said this a million times because they're not really giving me an answer they're not telling me why they broke up this friendship other than it was really toxic to hear about you and Carter and it was really taxing on us, blah, blah, blah. So that's a reason after everything we've been through over 10 years to just kick me to the curb and just say, this is so much bigger than that. This is so much bigger. Like, what is so much bigger? How about I was going through one? And I feel like Stassi may start to understand this now that she and Bo just bought like a fixer up her house and just how hard adulting can be and houses are hard and relationships are hard. And so imagine what I would like for them to sort of get, and I hope they will at some point. I just bought a house on my own. I was going through one of the hardest breakups, the most adult relationship, yeah, that I've ever had. The person I, granted, I say this in the book a million times, every guy I've ever been with, I was like, I'm going to marry him. I'm going to marry him. I'm going to marry him. Yeah. But as a grown 36-year-old and just breaking up with my boyfriend of four years. Who you thought was the Who one. truly, I was like, oh my God, this is it. Like, mm. this is so great. And it just wasn't. And I tried to make it work for a really long time. And I had to just come to terms that it just, he's a great man, but he's not the great right man for me. Mm-hmm. So going through that and then buying the house and just feeling so frustrated and then fighting with them and then having them drop me, it was like... Yeah, I'm not in a great place, but I made it out through it. And Mm -hmm. I don't know how I feel now. I I feel like I'm just watching the show with everyone else, and hopefully I get some more answers. Um, We filmed the reunion in a month. I So what happened with the wine? Well, I mean, we're still selling it. You just don't do, like, appearances or anything together? No, we did. Where did people buy it? Um, You buy it at knockingpoint.com. Okay. N-O-C-K-I-N-G-E-P-O-N-T. So I'm still a huge fan of it. I still drink it. I love it. Katie still helps me promote it. Stassi kind of has taken a backseat to being a part of that. But I'm just – it was something that we did together, that we created together, and and we did a really great job, and I'm I'm just really proud of it. Um, I I want to ask this one question because it was – it was in there. Okay. This uh, is from a Juicy Scooper. Mm-hmm. They said, isn't it ironic that Bo rides Stassi's coattails? This is not my question. Yeah. Moved into her apartment, her house, and is the co-host of her show. But she has she had so much to say about Carter. Mm-hmm. So, well, they're engaged, <laughs> number one. And I, I mean, would, this is and, her fiance. And I was so. going to say. <laughs> it's about if, to be her husband. And in it's their, a little really, different. And in their relationship, from what she's shared and what we've seen, mm-hmm. He's been nothing but a delight. Yeah. Both so great. so they are a great couple. Yes. But I guess this person kind of felt like And Bo didn't so I feel like maybe people didn't realize this because they always filmed at Stassi's apartment, but until they just <laughs> moved into their house that they just bought, yes. they've lived in separate apartments. Yeah. They pretty much just sleep at each other's place for the last couple of years. But Bo had an apartment that was like two blocks away from Stassi's. And I also want to say on like his own. Bo, So he wasn't like yeah, and leeching Bo, off of and her. Bo is in the was in the entertainment business, right. was an actor, mm-hmm. is funny, so I think the, their chemistry yeah. is real, and it's not like and he enjoy. I mean, yeah. I I'm not close with Bo anymore, unfortunately. Either we do talk a little bit, but everything that Stassi's built for herself, as far as like her podcast, her podcast tour, things like that, it's like right up Bo's alley. Right, doing he, Vanderpump Rules is like it came so natural to him. It doesn't come naturally to everybody. It's right, can be and I very remember hard. her saying that she like always wished that she could have someone that she clicked with that was also okay with exposing their life yeah. the way she has. It's very hard to date on Vanderpump Rules I unless you're think. dating someone who's already on the cast, because like for me being single, it's like you. Even when I met Carter, like you wonder, do they? Will they a never do the show because they don't want anything to do with it, or b do they only want to date you because they want to be on the show? And yes. it's really terrifying. And so and it's for hard to her to have out. Bo, who obviously didn't care if he was on the show or not on the show, but was willing to 
do that for her. Yeah. And then it did become so natural for him and everyone fell in love with him. I just think that it worked out for them. Yeah. But I don't think Bo's a leech at all. No. No, I neither do I. Mm-hmm. But, you know, so, um, and I think they are a great, yeah. a great match. But, I mean, in this, in this situation, that, you know, with the wedding and everything coming up, yeah. so you're, <laughs> you are not, at this According point. According to Stassi, when she did Watch What Happens Live, I, it's a 50-50 chance. Oh, okay. So, that's cool. That feels really great. Like, I'm not, I mean, I'm not going to sit there, so, like, on my hands and knees. And honestly, if they invite, I don't know how I feel right now. So, when you're in a situation, like, at, whether filming or someplace else, mm-hmm. um, for example, when I saw you at BravoCon, mm-hmm. you guys were all in a small room together. Yeah. Is it like, you it's don't have, work. You, do you have, like, eye contact? Yeah. I mean, I have I think I was more uncomfortable, obviously, than they were at first, but... I'm I'm not going to just sit back and like keep my lips zipped and feel uncomfortable in a in a space that's mine too. Like I'm yes. there, I'm working. And if that's you have good. a problem with me, then that's your problem, not mine. Yeah. Like what you think about me is none of my business. So I'm just going to just do my thing and it ended up being great and when we're in those situations and in those work sort of um times like we're fine and we small talk and bullshit and we're cordial and we ex- exchange pleasantries. And whatnot. Um, I've seen both Katie and Stassi socially, like in group settings as well. I find it much easier to converse with them when they're not together. Okay. Yeah. So, like, I threw Brittany a big birthday party in January, and Stassi was texting me that she was going to come, like, help me set up if I needed anything. And then we were there one on one, kind of like, okay, do we like say how are you? Do do you talk about your personal life? Do you not? Like, I don't know. And so I just went for it, and I figured if she pushed me away, then that's fine. You know? I'm and, not, it w- and it was okay. It was fine. Okay, yeah. that's good. Yeah. Well, it's, I mean, it's hard enough in a long-term friendship when at a certain point the dynamic changes mm-hmm. or the boundaries change or, you know, and then to do it on this TV show <laughs> and, you know, and Have like it drag out. <laughs> yeah, and I always think like, God, if I end a relationship, I'm not like jeopardizing someone's reality show career. Mm-hmm. So it's like with Housewives or whatnot, when a friendship ends on, with certain friendships, like with certain Housewives and things, you know, if Queen B doesn't like you anymore, mm-hmm. um, it's just really not going to work out. For yeah, you. And they're going to replace you. Yes, on the and we're we're going to have to. They're like, you had a good season. Yeah, hey, thanks. Bye. Yeah, yeah. It, you know, <laughs> it's how, different on our show. How though. are we going to do that? Well, with your show, it is different. So I think that's good. Mm-hmm. Um, who's this lady in the back? Oh, that's Natalie Guillermo's wife, oh. the owners of Sir. Um, no offense, I don't know that she had to be in the poster always. Oh, yeah. she's always been. Mm-hmm. They just kind of like put them in the back. So. <laughs> yeah. Okay, then we got Jax. Mm-hmm. And how are you with Jax? Jax and I are great. Okay. I hate Jax. I hang out with Jax and Brittany the most. Okay. That's great. Yeah. I've had them, I know them now pretty well. Yeah. They both came on the show. And I mean, she really is, I say, really just like the happiest person. Brittany's the best. She's the best. <laughs> and I remember when I first talk to you I was like watching the show and I'm like okay eventually someone's gonna stop liking Britney right no it's not possible (laughs) it's not possible I mean and she turned Jax Taylor back into Jason Couchy like she is the only human on the face of the planet (laughs) like even including his sister that can keep him calm and that can handle his outbursts or you know when Jax is moody it's like a very frustrating person to be around and Brittany's able to just let it roll off her shoulders she gives him his five minutes to be you know a little baby and then she brightens him right back up it's it's pretty intense to watch it's really awesome <laughs> um okay and then below we have uh Tom Schwartz mm-hmm. and Katie mm-hmm. and so and you said you're just you do okay with her on your own but it's still yeah like we're we can talk about anything that has nothing to do with our friendship <laughs> like basically we can talk about surface level okay topics and that's pretty much it and we're and so when where we see in the show from a couple weeks ago is that you and Cardi you say you're broken up mm-hmm. but then he needed to get something from the house mm-hmm. so you're like sure go yeah and then they're like what are you doing why are you still communicating with him right so how like, how long have you broke? But you are broken up with Carter. Yeah, we've now been actually technically we've been broken up for a year. Okay, a little over a year. 
Um, so we broke up like beginning of last February ish. And yeah, I mean, we did drag it on. Like we still lived together until June when I finally moved into my house. I bought my house in April. I moved in in June. He didn't move with me, but we did still hang out. And then there, there were times throughout the summer that I considered dating him again. Mm -hmm. Like I was like, I don't think we can jump back into a relationship where you're going to move into my house and we're going to be that way, but maybe we can take some space and then try again. And it, I mean, that'll unfortunately for the viewers drag on throughout the whole season. Yeah. Um, the ups and the downs of it. But I was just going through a lot. I had a lot of stuff going on at home. My brother was really sick. And Carter is someone that I trust and someone that I respect and someone that I really cared about and love. So it felt natural to just kind of get back into a routine with him. But eventually I just had to, to just call and it And how did, how did it affect his life? Um, choosing to be featured on the show. Yeah, and it's really hard for him, and I feel I feel for him a lot. Granted, he did make the choice to do it, but he only did it for me. He didn't gain anything by being a part of the show. He just wanted to do it because it was part of my life. And like we talked about earlier, like you can't date someone that's not really willing to be a part of it. Then you end up with like a Stassi Patrick situation, which is so hard on us because – we're here to to bleed out. This is what we agreed to do for this show and is don't to really you, live our lives. And don't you think it really – I mean, Patrick didn't realize, I don't think, what a jerk he was or, yeah. what, <laughs> or what he appeared to be on camera. Mm -hmm. But I was like, how is that – Yeah, he's kind of the worst. Like when I when – I, I saw things in a different light when I even watched it like than when I was living it. I think at the time that he and Stassi were dating, I was so defensive for her – and everyone being like, oh, Patrick, oh, but she still really loved him. So I'm like, don't talk about Patrick like that. Like, no one knows what it's like behind closed doors. And then yes. once I saw it on TV, I'm like, wow, he's actually the worst. Well, it's like, like he was really... no one knows what it's like behind closed doors. But we are seeing behind yeah, closed doors. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. We are seeing a camera, you know, in your bedroom and having private mm -hmm. talks and everything. And for him, I wonder, and I never followed his career or knew yeah. what radio show he did. But it it definitely did not improve. No. It uh -oh. definitely did not get better. And I think that is part of when you are the boyfriend to a reality star, mm -hmm. whether you're Bethany Frankel's ex-husband, Jason Hoppe, mm -hmm. which we've, you know, <laughs> seen not good things. Yeah. Um, and, and afterwards, like, did him going on the show and then all this subsequently being this public person that maybe never set out to be it but agreed to be it. And now it's just like every woman – Pretty much hates you, yeah. And because they're and they will very much uh, DM you and tell you that, yeah, and tell you everything that they want to tell you. And it's like I just want everyone to like give Carter a break, like just give him a break. Like we had, we there were times that weren't great for both of us. I know that I publicly talked about it. I probably, I don't know. I battle with like, should I have never told my friends? But they're my best friends. I should be able to to vent to them when I'm frustrated and not have yes. them trash him on national television. But I don't know. Carter's a really good guy. We just didn't work. I'm I'm always going to back him and I'm always going to defend mm -hmm. him. And I think that was something really hard over the summer was like as I was trying to pull away from him and be alone, the more the girls trashed him, the more it brought me closer to him because I just felt this like dire need to protect and defend him, even if he was wrong. Right. You know. Yeah. So I hope I just want everyone to give him a break. Like we're broken up. He went through a lot. Just give, give the kid a break. <laughs> Yes. Did he ever get like hit on by fans sliding into the DMs? I'm sure. I mean, I'm sure. Yeah. I never worried about anything with him. I think that was one wonderful thing about our relationship. It's like we never worried about infidelity. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So going back to the poster. Mm -hmm. So now we have um, Peter mm -hmm. up at the top. Plus Peter. He's being featured more this yeah. season. Peter's a gem. Okay. Then um, Dana. Dana, the new girl. Mm hmm. And she is bisexual too. Yes. Do you feel that that took away Ariana? <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> like Ariana's like, that's my thing. No, I'm just kidding. But they're like really, really, really close friends. So I think that they bonded over that and kind of protect each other on that level too. I really like Dana a lot. And then she is in still in a relationship with the manager. Yes, that okay. you're seeing on the show right now. Okay. Yeah. Yes. And so they, we see them falling in love and getting committed mm -hmm. however as a viewer and mm -hmm. i don't know anything but i would think 
as someone that, you know, wants to obviously be in this business and be a stand-up, like, I can't say that if I, if this wasn't available to me 20 years ago when I was a struggling stand-up in my 20s, yeah. I probably would be like, well, let me go get, try to get a waitressing job at Sir and see if I can't get on this show mm -hmm. so that people, because I remember like just for anybody to see my stand up was right. so much effort. You had right. to invite them to physically come see you. Right. And here you can be on a show and be paid for it and get your Instagram. And hey, good for her. You can't, you can't. The show's blame. a platform where no one's doing Vanderpump rules for their health. You know what I no. mean? <laughs> uh, or the free food. And yeah. so. <laughs> And then I get twenty percent off it, sir. Let's not get it twisted. <laughs> and then to kind of, ob you know, be sexually attracted to someone else there, it's sort of like, hey, you know, two is better than one mm -hmm. to have storylines to film with to get this going. And I mean, I think when Max is hot, I get it. Yeah, <laughs> good for her. I feel like did stop. Did Sheena really care that much? I feel like Sheena gets a shit edit. Yes. Um, but yeah, I think Sheena did care. I think there were points that she did really care because Sheena really likes attention, and the if the attention's not on like her, Max. and she really liked Max, and they really did date. And it she wasn't, did buy him an Apple Watch. She did buy him an Apple Watch. Why didn't yes. he return those damn texts? You know. Um, I think she did care, but I think it's. I just think the edit's really funny and drags it out a little more than what it was. Yeah. But I definitely think she cared at a point. For and sure. Sheena at this point in the show is freezing her eggs. Mm -hmm. So she was a little hormonal. Oh yeah. And she A lot hormonal. Yes. But now she is with her Australian hot piece of ass. Yes. Big old Brock. Now they've been dating a little while now, like yeah. six months or something, yeah. right? Around there. Yeah. Because I met them at the Bravo, Bravo Con, Con was like they, the first public like yeah, outing they had, and they'd been dating like around two months mm -hmm. since then. Yeah, he is absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. Do we get to see him at all this season, or or that was after? No, it was after. after. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then this other girl is that the Mini Sheena? Yes, is she's <laughs> yes. Is she the she's Latina? She is Mini Sheena. She yeah. That's I honestly I didn't know her name for like half the summer. I just called her Mini Sheena because I feel like she watched Vanderpump Rules seasons like one through five, and she was like, "What does that girl wear? Crop tops, neon green, bought like you know the bandage dress." Okay, that's what I'm gonna do too. Like I literally feel like she studied Sheena and then just and she's decided Latina, to be that way. And she came from Bakersfield, which mm -hmm. is not a fancy city, right? And kind of was like, I'm leaving this little town. And Sheena's from Azusa. Yeah, know, I'm you know. driving like an hour and a half to the city uh -huh. and changing my life. Yeah. And you're right. It's very much that. And then she, is she dating him? This I don't movie? know. I, I'm i like. Whatever. That's yeah, the story. That's what we're seeing. Okay, let me get some other questions for you. Mm -hmm. Someone said, how does, how does her back feel? Considering she had to carry the whole show for years. <laughs> I've read that so many times. Look, I'm not narcissistic. When I retweet it, it's, I think it's funny. And yes, I feel like I have pulled a lot more weight than a lot of people. But I will humble myself and say we all know that no one can carry their own show on this. Uh, no, no cast member can carry their own show. Right. We need each other. There's a reason that the show's done so well because of the dynamic from all of us. Now, with you your know. bad behavior mm -hmm. and, you know, that time you slapped James at whose wedding was that? Sheena's. Sheena's. Um, when you would get so heated and crazy like mm -hmm. that, is it just like you really were so in the moment you don't think about cameras catching it or anything like that? I didn't care. I, I didn't care. And what does your family say when they would see those things? Oh, they back me. I mean, they know what an awful human being James Kennedy was and he deserved it. Yeah. I could get away with it. Like, I knew that I could get away with it. Like, he wasn't going to hurt me. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's nothing he was going to be able to do with giant security guards and camera crews around. So, yeah, I don't regret that at all. Does it ever bother you that everyone forgives Jack so easily for all the horrible stuff he does and says, well, they, they take forever to forgive you for anything? Yeah, I mean, it used to frustrate me. Not so much anymore. I think, I think now that we've grown up a little bit, like, Jax is getting his, but... I think people are afraid or were like in the past when that would happen a lot. I think people were afraid of Jax because back in the day when Jax was like at his worst, if you will, um, pre-Britney. And when was his worst? When he stole the sunglasses in Hawaii? I think like pre-Britney. Okay. 
It was like really bad. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And the sunglasses, not so great. You have your debit yeah. card in your hand, dude. What are you doing? Like, slow down on the tequila shots. But I think when Jax really was at his worst, it what everyone was afraid of is that if Jax didn't have something on you, he was going to make something up. So oh, don't speak of which, did he make up the you going down on Britney's as that Lisa never Vanderpump happened? I would one million percent just be like, hell yeah, I did it. Like we made out and like we like I don't know like first base type shit. But no, so you did not eat her Kentucky, Kentucky muffin. muffin. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no. Interesting that that then was a storyline because then I think people then didn't believe it bet- uh, when we got it the following year. Yeah. When um, Sandoval said, oh, yeah, Ariana you know, Ariana, Lala. who went down on who? Lala, yeah. Lala, Lala and Ariana. And um, I was like, is this even real or is they just throwing this out every year? No, that was for real. That one was for yeah. real. I just think with Jax, like especially in the past, when the attention is not on Jax anymore, he like freaks out. And he's like, look at me, look at me, look at me. Okay. You know what I mean? And that will happen later on this season. He and I got into it and we didn't talk for a month after that because I was so mad at him. But it was like Katie and Tom told Jackson and Brittany, when you, once you get married, no one cares about you anymore. Just know that. It's been your year. Like you had your bachelor and your bridal shower and this and Jackson and Brittany are engaged. Oh, my God. Once you get married, people are going to start talking and thinking about other things. And the second that happened, Jax was like, wait, what, it's not about me anymore? He started, you know, poking around and kind of being a dick again. Do so. you think he was the ultimate groomzilla? No. He is acting like... It's just like the he, attention thing. But I think he is acting like your typical bride. Yeah. That is like, you know, firing bridesmaids and, yeah. you know, saying, no, you weren't there enough or you right. weren't, you know... And somebody else has been a better friend right. and kind of switching around. And you see it because it's your day and it's your important. Yeah. And you, you know, but then you also, we've also all been the bridesmaid. That's like, okay, my God, I said <laughs> yeah. I would get it. I said I'd be there at one. I know I started at 12, but mm-hmm. I said that's not like a an F you, yeah. like, you know, that type of thing. So I do think he was a little bit like that. Um, okay, so what did you think of Jack's kicking Sandoval out of the wedding? That was a sticky situation. I don't know. I mean, Sandoval, uh, they're both just such attention whores, both Jax and Sandoval. <laughs> and especially like watching it, because obviously I didn't sit there through in real life, like through every, every conversation that they had. But Sandoval in his apologies, but is so, so true and on brand for Sandoval. Like, to say, I'm sorry. Yeah, but. I'm sorry. But, but let me tell you why I did what I did, because why I did what I did. I'm not really sorry. I'm just trying to, he's just trying to like shut the conversation down and like talk about how he feels again. And that's something that both Jax and Tom tend to do. Yes. So when you have two people that really only give a shit how they feel (laughs) going against each other, it's not going to end well. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I I see that. Um, And we don't know what happens. Yeah. Though people have seen photos. Right. So it's like, but okay, fair. we'll see. Hopefully, you'll see. Yeah. So obviously, how, Tom how, was there, but but how they make up and what level? Mm-hmm. Um, any thoughts on the homophobic pastor? I just think Jackson and Brittany did what they had to do, and I think it was really up to nobody but them. Right. And it, just because they didn't fire him through the first set of tweets, it like it's no one's place to tell them what to do, and they and they handled it appropriately. You know, once they realized that it, they don't stand for what was being said. I mean. I'm not going to come out and say that he's homophobic. I don't know the no, guy. I think right. he was – people don't love my point of view on it. I think he was reciting Bible verses, but and that's what he was doing. No, that Jackson, Brittany, and nor do I agree with what those Bible verses say. And I think that's what it came down to, that they were like, we can't stand by this. And, you know – And I think Lance was the perfect and I, and person I think, to marry them. Right, and I think it made a lot of sense that – this was their old family friend, right. so it was the first person they thought of, but then these things come to light, and they're public figures, and mm-hmm. they're like, oh, shit, you know? And in no way had them cho- been choosing him in the beginning was like an affront to anybody that right. was LGBTQ. But I recently went to a wedding, and um, the the pastor that was marrying them, these, this couple started to get into that same type of uh-huh. rhetoric. And... It's so uncomfortable. It was like really uncomfortable. It's and so for uncomfortable. a couple of the people that were there, their dad, like a cousins, the dad was like, oh, yeah, my kids were like ready to, yeah, wanted to get up and leave, you yeah. know? And you're like, 
well, we're we're here now. Right. So I, you know, and um, so I do think it's really important to no matter whether you're getting married in a church or through a friend that you go over what that person says. Right. Sometimes you get somebody and they don't even know you and they mm-hmm. do some weird thing and you're like, that was dumb. I spent 50000 on this wedding. Yeah. I, the guy should at least have come out to dinner and taken a couple notes. Right. You know? Gotten to know us as and a couple. And then you also want to make sure that someone isn't going to do some weird rhetoric that you don't believe that you in. Don't that's stand gonna, for. Yeah, that's going to exclude people and like go, what the hell is he talking right. about? So. Obviously, it was great. And when Brittany's like, Lance Bass is my pastor now. <laughs> I'm like, I love it. It was great. Well, okay. 16-year-old Brittany was freaking out. Yeah. <laughs> but we love Lance. Of yeah, course. Like, what a great choice that, that was. Yeah. What a perfect like ending to that whole nightmare. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Here, let's some of these you've answered. Okay. Let's see. Um, your traveling problems. I, I, this is so weird. It was one trip. Like I, I thought it was several. It was one. No, it was well. Copenhagen was like the real kicker, which we didn't see on Vanderpump Rules. Like I had never been jet lagged before. I'd never been to Europe. I had, so, so when the cameras was weren't awful. on, you and who other me, Katie, Stassi, and Rachel O'Brien all decided we're going to Copenhagen. We're going to Copenhagen for and just then a vacation. Paris. Yeah. Yes. And what happened? And I was like a, a crazy person. Like I. I woke up every day at like one o'clock in the morning thinking it's 9 a.m. I couldn't get my sleep schedule right. I felt like I wasn't sleeping at all. Obviously, we were drinking on top of that. And four girls, like, I love to were travel. You sharing a, I, a bed or a room? Yeah, we had like two bedrooms, uh-huh. like an Airbnb type thing. Um, and it just made me feel like a crazy person. And I just wanted to go home. I was like, this is awful. And I've realized now, like, I can travel. I travel, like, Rachel O'Brien and I, are, I'm going on this, like, podcast tour with her right. where she's doing stand up and whatnot. Rachel and I are great travel partners. And we, we're, like, complete opposites as far as, like, sleep schedule. But we just work really well together. I've traveled alone with Katie. Brittany is one of my favorite people to travel with. I think I cannot travel with Stassi. I think it's, like, the big problem. And it can be really hard to travel in, like, groups of girls. Yes. Because people are very like, stuck in their ways of what they want that trip to look like. Mm. And I don't do well with that because I'm kind of just like fly by the seat of my pants. Like, let's just have a good time. And what about when it is someone's trip? Like, mm-hmm. let's say it's someone's like birth- a ba- Like a birthday. A yeah, like it's party. a birthday trip. Do you... Do you then still go, well, it's still my trip too because I'm here? Or No, do you... I really just go along with whatever. I, I feel like I'm actually a really easy person to travel with. And when it comes to like arranging things, like the one thing that my ex-best friends say about me is that I can make shit happen. I handle everything. I make it all happen. Like nobody can tell me, no, we're not waiting in a line to do that. Like I'm going to make everyone's life a lot easier, even if it makes mine a little bit harder. You're going to do the scheduling, the itinerary. That's yeah. It. You're good at that. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I just think, I think Stassi and I really don't travel well together. And so when you did leave after mid trip, mm-hmm. did that put a strain on the relationship or no, that was okay? Yeah, it did. I mean, the thing was with that specific trip, I was going to Copenhagen, then we were going to Paris. The day I got back, Carter and I were going to Turks and Caicos. And I was like, I can't do it. Like, my brain's going to explode. I need to go to bed. I want to be with my dogs. I don't feel safe. Like, Oh, so you wanted to go home early from I, the yeah, European so I, trip. So I didn't go to Paris. So that you could have some downtimes before mm-hmm. Turks and Caicos. Yeah. But did they might have taken that as you not uh, sticking to your commitment I mean, I paid for the the Paris Airbnb, so it was like, hey. No, I'm just kind of (laughs) asking... Yeah. In the girl fight, girlfriend dynamic. Thing. Yeah. No, it was really bad, that trip. Like, that was that was on me. I was acting like a total psycho. Yeah. I just had never experienced jet lag before. And, it could, like, not sleeping can make you absolutely insane. Yeah. I value sleep as an adult <laughs> a lot. So, okay. Well, good. So you learn from your lesson. <laughs> yeah. So are you never going to go to Europe again? Maybe not. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. Or maybe you really have to, like have those days in between yeah i feel like i would do well with like a boyfriend someone i'm dating right you know or something. you'd break up with them yeah okay <laughs> <Or that>. um <laughs> how do you like or agree with how bravo has portrayed you through the years i think it's fair okay i mean we're all one-dimensional at the end of the day of course like i wish that they were like show sweeter moments or you know things like that but they have a story to tell and now you know 72 cast members yeah. they can't show all sides of everyone and everything i've you know if it comes out of my mouth then it's it's fair game now on the last time you were on which was many years ago you shared that james's mom 
either used your credit card for mm-hmm. Botox. What was it? She stole my credit card number and bought Botox for herself. And she, you found out because the plastic surgeon's office was confirming no, an so or no, I I was randomly going through my credit card statement for something, like looking for something to, that was cleared or whatever, and I see this four hundred dollar charge from some med spa like in Beverly Hills, and I'm like, okay, that's not the one I go to to get Botox. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's weird, and and I kept trying to like backtrack and think like, is there any? But it was so recent, so I called, and eventually. They said, you know, do you know this person? And they said her name. And I said, yes. And they said, oh, you're her sister, right? You called in to, like, gift her this for her birthday. And I was like, oh, you've got to be fucking kidding me. That's that's wonderful. Uh, and, and then she did it again with a, a, my credit card one more time. So What did you purchase then? Uh, it was, like, something for his brother for soccer or something like that. My mom told me cancel the card right away. And I was like, she'll never do it again. I called her out. Her. She paid me back. Yeah, I couldn't. Conf- oh, yeah. What was her excuse? And James, you know, at that time, I felt bad for James. He was humiliated. Yes. Um, she really didn't have one. She was just very defensive. She's a mess. Yeah. Did she wish you to be barren on uh, yeah. national TV? <laughs> yes. She did. Yeah. I must have missed that episode. Mm-hmm. What'd she say? I don't remember, but I do remember it happening. Um. Okay. Oh, why was Carter never allowed to go on the cast vacations? But Bo instantly um, was. I don't know. That's a great question. I mean, one of the times he had a work trip, so he couldn't because he's he goes out of town a lot for work. Uh-huh. Um, and then another so time he just want- wasn't included. So one of the times had you wanted him, they would have yeah. flipped the bill and bought his ticket. And stuff. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I, otherwise we just would have. I would have loved to have had him there. He did get to go to Tom and Katie's bachelorette party, bachelor bachelorette. Yeah. Which was fun and messy. And and when you go to something like that, they do pick up, a, certainly for a regular cast member, they would mm-hmm. pick up your flight. Yeah. But if you want to bring a boyfriend, is there is, is that ever like, well, you can come? Or like, what yeah. if like Rachel O'Brien is invited, but she's not a cast member? Yeah, they member. wouldn't be. They're yeah. not picking up her. No. But they're like, you can still come, just sign Yeah, things release. like Jackson and Brittany's Bachelor, Bachelorette. Like, yeah. There were a lot of like the Kentucky girls that, because Brittany had such a right. big wedding party and like Jack says groomsmen, but... They're just responsible. It's just like any right. normal bachelor party. Like you're own. responsible for your own flight. We're fortunate enough that when it's a cast trip, that you know they'll cover that for us. And then the last time, then he wasn't included, right? And they and did you ask? Mm-hmm. And they're just like, no. Yeah. Mm, it's kind of sad. And then you had to go yeah. home and tell him that. Yeah. It was. It was. Yeah. It sucked. I mean. I mean. You, well, and with Jackson Brittany's though, Jacks told him he wasn't welcome to come. Oh, okay. Because he said, if you guys are broken up, I just don't think you should be there. And I didn't have the balls to say, I don't think he should go because at the time I just wanted him to not feel so discluded from everything, even but though were we were hap- broken up. But were you, did you would you have wanted him to be included or you were glad he was not included? I think it was way better that he wasn't. Okay. For sure, because I feel like if had he gone, it would have just, their whole trip would have been ruined by my drama with Carter. Like, right. we had to talk about it enough without him there. Yeah. If he would have been there, it would have, I think, taken over. I just felt bad for him because he was going through a breakup, too. Yeah. You know? It wasn't just me. Like, he was hurting. And um, so what's your plan if and when the show ever ends? I mean, it could go on for another 12 years, okay? Mm-hmm. But if it was, you have the book. Yeah. What else? And you have your clothing company. Yeah, it's very James cute, May. Thank you. Really cute stuff. And that Thank and you. that does pretty well. And it you've does had really it for well. a while. Yeah. We're really excited about that. Um, James May is going great. Our spring collection's coming out soon. And what? how many types of clothes besides the cute shirts that you're wearing, like, right now? We, we only do... Well, we have... We have Five different cuts of shirts of, okay. of, for women and then just a unisex for men. We have sweatshirts. We have some sustainable, some like recycled um, T-shirts and sweatshirts. And we also sell vintage now. We have accessories. So we're just like, kind of keeping it in our fun little like boho, rock and roll, classic rock sort of vibe. And is it all online or yeah, is it in some it's, stores? It's all online. And we yeah, and we do wholesale through some boutiques around the country as well. Okay. So now getting to the book. There yes. There's a couple fun stories that I read I wanted to ask you about. Okay. One was um, when you thought this boyfriend that you had, who you were working at a restaurant with, you thought he and this other waitress were screwing behind your back. Mm-hmm. So you <laughs> then flirted heavily with her and was going to be that cool chick that's down for your first threesome. Yeah. I solicited a threesome 
so I could prove that they were cheating. Because you were hoping <laughs> to see that once you all started like making out with each other, that then they would go right for each other, and then you'd be like, I, I could knew see the you chemistry. were cheating. Yeah, like was this the, if it was the that first time so or not? Weird. Yeah. Why would you ever? So weird. And I was, I mean, I was 22 years That's old. That's what's so great mm-hmm. is that there's so many stories. Yeah. Like that. It made perfect you... sense to me at the time. Like if they weren't going to tell me that they were hooking up, I was going to figure it out and see it with my own two eyes. While you sat on the edge of the bed crying. <laughs> Essentially. But that's not what happened. No, it's not what happened. What happened was <laughs> the girl was really super into you. Yeah. And so you're like, oh, she's full-blown lesbian mm-hmm. and she's just after me yeah she's but that's bisexual a, yeah but that's also not what happened right <laughs> what did happen in it's a very end, messy situation <laughs> what did so now you think you're good yeah oh my god i can't believe i thought they were bony she's actually a super lesbian that was super into me i read which, i read it all wrong <laughs> and we didn't even you guys ended up not consummating a threesome a lesbo relationship nothing mm-hmm. you let it go and then you are out one night, and the, the who you think is a lesbian girl who's in love with you is with your boyfriend, and you're like, of course, they're fine. Mm-hmm. Already established this, already proven my case. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay out a little longer. I'm gonna let them to mm-hmm. go to bed early because they're both so tired. Yeah. And then what happened? And they're they're just best friends. Yeah. Um. Yeah. He he broke up with me in a fucking note in the screen door. <laughs> So you come home at 4 a.m. Mm-hmm. expecting him to be have been asleep sleep for three to four hours. Yeah. Freshly yeah. brushed teeth and just yeah, waiting for you to snuggle up to. And you see this the note and it says what? It was like it was a, a fairly it was it had some bulk to it, more uh-huh. than what I wrote in the book. But essentially what I remember it saying, like the things that stuck out to me was like, you were right, she's great. You and I had a good run. That I will never forget that line. We had a good run. I'm like, we were together for two years. Like, are you kidding me? Oh, you were together for two years? <laughs> yeah. yeah. From what age to what age for, for you? Were you uh, t- like 21? Let me think. We met when I was 21 to 23. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. It's condensed a little bit in the book. Right, but we right. were together yes, for course. a long time. But yeah. Oh. And he broke up with me in a fucking note. And I was right the whole entire time. So trust your intuition, ladies. <laughs> Here's another weird thing that you did. Yeah, lots of them. <laughs> um, so you met this hot guy, and he had three stars tattoo or four stars tattoo. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And you saw that tattoo, and he said, and you're like, I like that tattoo. And he's like, yeah, it'd look good on you. Mm-hmm. So then you just date him a little bit. Yeah, like two months. <laughs> two months. <laughs> and then If he you bre- even call it that, because he was out of town most of the time that we... Dated, right. but I so thought had, we were in love. Anyway, he breaks up with you. Yes. And you thought the reason he broke up with me is that I never did get that star tattoo. Mm-hmm. So why don't I go do that now? Yeah. And then I'll show him and he's gonna be like, Wow, this is cool and so special and I guess you really, I mean, really cared is, about me. That is bona fide restraining order psycho. Uh-huh. So Good and stuff. then after you twenty four years old. <laughs> after you got the this the matching tattoo. How did you then accidentally run into him and let him see your wrist? Well, it definitely was not accidental. <laughs> right. <laughs> I kind of had a feeling I knew where he'd be hanging out. And I thought if I just like casually ran into him, it was like, I'm doing great. And then make him see your... what he was missing and like, oh, Extend look. your arm. Mm-hmm. And so you extend your arm and what happens? Yeah, it didn't go well at all. What did he say? I mean, he pretty much thought, he was like, I never told you to do that. Like, why? Like, you know what I mean? Like, it was like, what are you talking about? Like, why would, I think he said, why would you do that? (laughs) I'm like, what? What? Okay. Yeah. That was, it was a bad, so I covered it. Thank God. (laughs) It looks good. You would never know that that was not meant because you got your sign. A very fat Aquarius sign over top. A very thick one. (laughs) Um, That was amazing. And then the other juicy story was... That you dated some guy who said, the only way I'm going to, I want to date you and I will date you and I'm going to bring you to this fun Palm Springs weekend to meet my family, which is, oh my God, so flattering that you're going to meet the family. Mm -hmm. But I need you to go to the three day, and it was called the form, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay. So I I can't really, yeah, like I can't really like, you know. Well, I remember it. Yeah. So when I was reading it. You knew exactly what I was Well, I had a lot of people trying to recruit me to go to Mm -hmm. the forum. A lot of actors were doing it. Yes. It was basically Scientology light. Mm -hmm. And it was like more like 
um, a three day thing or going to classes after or you really need to do that. I remember I had my manager say, and she was this girl and, you know, she met me at the comedy store and she used to, she said, I managed Margaret Cho for a minute. Yeah, when Margaret was like 16. Yeah. Okay? And then, so I was like, oh my God, someone wants to manage me. And then she's like, you have to do this thing, the form. And I'm like, you know what? I've heard about this form thing for a while. And Mm, I think you should just try to like get me on audition. Yeah. Like, why do I have to spend six hundred dollars? Why do I need to be transformed? <laughs> so you went and did that. I did. And now you in it you you talk about like how you wrote this letter to this old boyfriend. Oh, yeah. I want to hear just more about what that was like. The so experience you, yes, of being so there. So you went home every night. Yeah. You so, didn't live there. No, it's it was it's like, like a three day it's like yeah, it's like twelve like a Tony 10, Robbins 12 hours kind of, a day. Yeah. And they ask you, you know, not to like drink or like unless it or do any like even like smoke weed or do any For sort of recreational anything yeah. unless it's like an absolute must need prescribed medication they want you to be your mind to be clear blah yes. blah blah and I was very like not into it. Um, I did everything now, did they told me not to. Or no, did the he boyfriend? paid for it. Okay, which also At least he paid for it. Which was also like a guilt thing on me though. He's like, like well, I already paid for it. it. Now yeah. I can't get a refund. So if you don't go, so I did and. Yeah, I was the first two days. I was really like, I don't care. I'm going to record things. I'm going to be on my phone. I'm going to write things down. I'm not going to pay attention. I'm not going to be present, quote unquote. Um, And then all of a sudden, on like day three, I was like, oh my God, like I'm feeling enlightened. Something just happened. So I did, wrote the letter. Like, you know, they, I think they asked you to make a phone call to someone. And I said, well, what if, I don't have the number. What if they don't answer? They said you could write a letter, write an email. And the whole point is not if they respond. The point is you're owning your bullshit. So when you wrote the letter to the old boyfriend, to the ex asshole, yeah. You like who mailed, never deserved Did you like that mail it? What? No, I emailed it. Oh, you emailed it. And did you hear back from him while you're still at the forum or not till after you got home? No, it was after, yeah. And <laughs> and that's ex- those are the exact verb. I so everyone knows when you read this book, I include the exact emails. I went back and found them, copy yes. and pasted as is his bad grammar and all. Yeah, I made sure when the book was edited, I'm like, do not fix anything in these letters because it's exactly how they were written. Right. Um. Yeah, that didn't go over well at all. <laughs> <laughs> and when uh, did you go to Palm Springs then? Um. Yeah, I did get to meet the fam. Was but, the Palm Springs weekend but fun? It was everything I hoped for. Was <laughs> no, it? I mean, we were fine. And then fine. did you have to go to the form classes with him afterwards? No, I never did. No. And how long did you I do? felt very enlightened for like, I think like two weeks I felt pretty untouchable. Yeah. After that, like I wasn't complaining anymore and I was just like I, using this new language and then, you know, two weeks later you get back into like real life and realize that like things are... They're going to have trials and tribulations and things aren't always going to go your way. And it's okay to be upset or sad as long as you move on. But in that moment when I started not feeling enlightened and transformed anymore, I'm like, oh, my God, I lost it. I lost it. I have to go back. Like, that is what they do to people. Oh, I so then see. you go, and I never did. Right. But I considered, like, do I need to go back to do the advanced course? Do I need a life coach? Like, what do I? Got no. it. Yeah. Got it. Okay. That was really interesting. Mm-hmm. Well, Kristen, we're very excited. The show is every Tuesday. Do you know how many episodes you guys have total this season? 21. Oh, that's very long. Plus we're reunions. All, we're only on like four right now, like four eight, or five. Seven or eight. Oh, we're that far along? Mm-hmm. Okay. I thought we were. So we have a lot to look forward to. Many months to come, yes. Um. So the book is He's Making You Crazy. Get your pre-orders. And I think you're going to have a lot of fun when this book comes out yeah. and promoting it and everything. And I think the thing I run into a lot with people is like they think I'm trying to like they're like why would I take dating advice from someone? No, it's not at all that. And it's not a it's not an advice book. It's not a self help book. But essentially, I think you should be almost listening to me because I've been through it. Like that's my whole point. Like I have been through everything you can ever imagine. It's very tongue in cheek and it's very light. Has anyone gotten a restraining order against you or attempted to get one? No, I think Tom Sandoval probably wanted to at some point. Yeah, but nobody has. (laughs) But no one actually ever has. Getting a a matching tattoo of someone that already broke up with you, (laughs) it would be pretty scary. Yeah, you know, it's it's, twenty four year old Kristen. But what I love is that there isn't. I don't believe there's one story that you, you know, that was too embarrassing to tell. Oh, no, not at all. You told them all. Everything. And I think that's what's really fun because you, you know, you've had long relationships, but you've also had these little fun brief ones. And I think that it's just really funny and relatable. 
And also the fun thing that you do that I used to do in my dating time is where you'd go like mustache man or yeah. freckle guy or like, you know, how the way you describe the, the person. Yeah. Or like, oh, the, you know, the eye doctor or whatever. Mm-hmm. And that part is always, I think a lot of girls do that. And it's kind of fun because it's like, mm, Let's not even use their name. Yeah, really they don't deserve to have their names Ferrari in this book. or whatever. Yeah, and I didn't do it to protect the innocent. No one is innocent in no. this book. <laughs> um, well, we're gonna play with your dolls because yes. you have your doll, and I have everybody else, and we'll do some stuff and put it on uh, my YouTube. And you can watch this whole episode on YouTube.com/slash Heather McDonald. And thank you, girl. Thanks, love.